Alexa Bliss snaps on Monday Night Raw last night after Uncle Howdy and Bray Wyatt imagery is shown. Dominic Mysterio is a changed man after spending hard time in prison following his arrest during the holiday season. The Bloodline have a hostile takeover of the first Raw of 2023. Country music star Hardy appears on last night's broadcast. A vignette airs hyping up the return of Cody Rhodes to WWE TV. Becky Lynch versus Ronda Rousey has been scrapped from WrestleMania 39. Speaking of WrestleMania, John Cena versus Cody Rhodes was it pre Previously pitched under the old regime. An update on WWE's new headquarters. Rumored free agent signing Colby Carino announces that he is now officially a free agent. Seth Rollins is possibly injured during last night's edition of Raw and a major milestone for Charlotte Flair. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of world wrestling entertainment. And we have to start off talking about none other than Alexa Bliss because she has snapped. And the teases, teasing the reunion or the revenge of Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss continue to air specifically last night on Monday Night Raw. This storyline is continuing to develop and Alexa Bliss did not capture the Raw Women's Championship from Bianca Belair on the first Raw of 2023, but she did enough to captivate the crowd at the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. The Belair versus Bliss title bout took a bizarre turn when the latter came face to face with a fan sporting an Uncle Howdy mask at ringside, following which a confused Bliss tried to maintain her focus on the match. Initially, Bliss got back in the ring and started to climb the turnbuckle for a top rope move until she came across another fan in an Uncle Howdy mask. A frightened looking Bliss started pulling her hair as the Wyatt Six Moth logo repeatedly flashed on the Titan Tron. Just as the referee checked on her, Bliss took him down with a Luthez press and began unleashing with right hands. After WWE officials called for a disqualification finish, Bliss directed her attention to Belair, taking down the EST with a Thez press followed by a flurry of punches. Bliss then threw Belair out of the ring and whipped her hard into the steel steps. This was followed up by a nasty DDT on the lower half of the steps. At this point, Belair began bleeding from her mouth as Bliss began her walk up the ramp. A few seconds later, Bliss returned to the ringside area with a sadistic look on her face before planting Belair with another DDT on the steel steps. The segment ended with Belair being escorted to the backstage area on a stretcher. Now, WWE has been teasing Bliss's involvement in the ongoing Uncle Howdy Bray Wyatt storyline for nearly a month now, but possibly actually even a bit longer than that. This past Friday, of course, on SmackDown on Fox, the final SmackDown of 2022, an Uncle Howdy video message interspersed with images of Wyatt's old gimmicks actually did include a brief shot of Bliss. Similarly, Bliss knocked out Belair with a flower vase on the December 19 edition of Raw upon being hypnotized by an image of the Wyatt Six Moth logo a week after she nearly laid out Belair with Sister Abigail. Now these teasers go all the way back really I can recall until Crown Jewel. That was the first time I can really recall it. Of course, Bliss was teaming with Asuka at the time. There was a backstage interview. And during the interview, the Wyatt Six Moth logo appeared on the screen and Bliss got captivated and hypnotized at that point. And then since then, Everywhere that Alexa Bliss has been, you've been able to see the Wyatt Six Moth logo or something involving Bray Wyatt in the background and slowly, 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 slowly manipulating Bliss. Now, of course, Bliss had betrayed the fiend Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania 37 in what was Wyatt's last WWE match prior to his release in July 2021. Later in the night, Bliss said she, quote, gained control when asked to explain her actions in a backstage interview. It was also reported that it was actually one year ago tomorrow or today that um, Alexa Bliss had her first therapy sessions to remove the Fiend's influence from her. Clearly, it feels like at this point, we're heading towards, it feels like we're heading towards a reunion or some kind of involvement with Bray Wyatt in the Alexa Bliss storyline or certainly vice versa. Alexa Bliss's influence in the Bray Wyatt storyline 
it's it's so heavy handed at this point. They can't keep the two worlds separate. My feeling is at this point because the Bray Wyatt storyline is exclusive to SmackDown at this point. Of course, this past Friday we saw Bray Wyatt's LA Knight officially announced for the Royal Rumble in that pitch black match, whatever that's going to look like. But we also saw Uncle Howdy appear in person for the second time on WWE programming, getting physical for the first time as he laid out Bray Wyatt with the sister Abigail. I think what we're going to see here is. These are two storylines that are running parallel to each other, and they're going to finally converge at the Royal Rumble. I think that Bray Wyatt wins against LA Knight in the pitch black match, and the reason he wins is because you have Uncle Howdy get involved, you have Alexa Bliss get involved, and that's three of the Wyatt Six. And it would appear, as we speculated before, that there could be a faction on the horizon. There could be a Bray Wyatt faction on the horizon. We could see Bray Wyatt... It feels like, certainly in the Wyatt side of the storyline, they're trying to suggest, or Uncle Howdy is trying to manipulate and push Bray Wyatt into once again becoming the Fiend. That's what it feels like. He wants him to put the mask back up, back on, and once he puts the mask back on, he wants Bray Wyatt to never take it off. So what we could see is a Wyatt 6 stable where you've got the Fiend, Bray Wyatt as the leader. You've got Uncle Howdy, which at this point we believe to be Bo Dallas. We haven't had any confirmation or reports about that, so we still don't know. Then you could have Alexa Bliss in there playing the Fiendess as she's played before, and then some possible other additions. Dutch, Vincent, and others have been rumored to be involved in a Wyatt Six faction, so clearly at some point, Alexa Bliss and Bray Wyatt are going to reunite. Alexa Bliss recently did an interview where she said it was the most fun and creatively fulfilling time she'd ever had in her career, so clearly she wants to move back to that and I think WWE they're also looking to move Alexa Bliss back into that kind of character but it does take time in the same way that Alexa Bliss's alignment with The Fiend in the first place took a bit of time it took for The Fiend to actually lock in the mandible claw to get back to that point and they're also trying to get Bray Wyatt back to that point as well so they have to kind of take time and again try and make the match at the perfect time but certainly an interesting development nevertheless. Now, Dominic Mysterio, by all accounts, he's a changed man, according to the star himself. The first Raw of 2023 replayed footage of Dominic Mysterio getting arrested after he and Rhea Ripley invaded Rey Mysterio's house on Christmas Eve. Dominic was then shown in a backstage segment where he went into detail about his prison experience and the lessons he learned from getting locked up. Quote, sadness is not a bad thing to feel, Dominic began, but it's that cold absence of feeling. That's what prison is like. You think I'm playing a game? You think this is a game to me? I served hard time and I survived. Prison changes a man and you guys might think it's over for me, but I'm just getting started. And Mammy, I'll see you soon. While the Judgment Day has been a regular fixture on Raw broadcast for several months, there was no sighting of Finn Balor, Damian Priest or Ripley on the January 2nd episode of the Red Brand Show on USA. Several members of the faction urged authorities to release Dominic from prison over the weekend, tweeting out the hashtag FreeDom to show solidarity with their teammate. Subsequently, WWE released a new t-shirt with the text Bail Me Out Mammy, I Won't Make It In Jail, soon after Dominic's kayfabe arrest. It remains to be seen if Dominic undergoes some kind of character change following his ordeal in jail. His father is currently, of course, part of SmackDown, and he's been embroiled in a feud with Karrion Cross in recent weeks. With WWE teasing a possible Ray vs. Cross match at the Royal Rumble, it is widely rumored that WWE will indeed pull the trigger on the long-awaited Ray vs. Dominic Mysterio singles match at WrestleMania 39. Of course, Dominic had turned on his legendary father at last year's Clash at the Castle premium live event, where he aligned him himself with the judgment day i thought the promo was great <laughs> i think this whole thing's great it's over the top and it's silly but that's the point because dominant mysterio he, he is difficult to take him seriously so you have to be a bit of a goofball so um i enjoyed it i i can't i can't lie i enjoyed it the bloodline made their presence felt last night on raw the first raw of 2023 kicked off with a faction attacking ring crew taking over the show in a hostile takeover according to Sami Zayn, the bloodline is performing a hostile takeover on last night's raw and said it was because of kevin owens after kevin owens decided he didn't actually remember what he had to say rather he wanted to go to the ring and just punch Zayn. he was interrupted by adam pierce authority figure adam pierce who clarified that this wasn't the bloodline show this was his show saying he didn't care what Roman Reigns wanted. He was in control of the show. He attempted to have the bloodline ousted by security. However, no dice. With the bloodline fending off plenty of security, Owens managed to make it to the ring as the locker room came out to even the odds. 
We have a run-in from the Street Profits, Elias, Cedric Alexander, Mustafa Ali, Luke Gallows and all coming out to make the save and run off the Bloodline, but Pierce stopped them before they could leave. He then told the Bloodline he hoped they brought their boots. He was putting them all in a match tonight. By the end of the next backstage segment, Solo Sokoa and Elias were set for a Nashville Music City street fight and a big six-man tag team match was on tap with Kevin Owens and the Street Profits taking on the Usos and Sami Zayn. We'll also talk about what happened uh, in that um uh, that Music City street fight right now because it involved none other than country music star Hardy. Country music star Hardy got physically involved in the Music City street fight between Solo Sokoa and Elias on the first Raw of 2023. Midway through the match, as Sokoa continued to dominate proceedings, Hardy, seated in the front row, tried to hand Elias a guitar. However... The assist did not pay off as Sokoa took it out of Elias' hand and dragged his opponent back into the ring. Thereafter, Hardy sneaked into the ring and smashed a guitar on Sokoa's back, only for the powerhouse Samoan to no-sell the guitar shot. Hardy would then smile and beg Sokoa for forgiveness before running away from the ring. Eventually, Sokoa would hit a spinning solo off the apron onto a piano to secure the pinfall victory. Later in the show, the announcers confirmed that Hardy would be performing live at the upcoming Royal Rumble Premium Live event. Hardy's hit single sold out as the official theme song for WWE's first Premium Live event of 2023, which will be held at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas on January 28th. Hardy had previously performed at WWE's Tribute to the Troops event in 2020. The Sokoa vs. Elias grudge match was announced uh, a few weeks after the Bloodlines enforcer brutally attacked Elias, leading to WWE's resident musician being written off television. That was with the Samoan spike to the throat. Sokoa, who seemed primed for a triumphant 2023, closed out last year with a victory over Sheamus in a hard-hitting match this past Friday on SmackDown. After his victory, Sokoa wrapped a steel chair around Sheamus's neck, and it appeared that the Celtic Warrior was a about to suffer the same fate as Elias and Matt Riddle, the two superstars who recently put out commission by the youngest Uso. However, Drew McIntyre ran down the ring and took out the bloodline, rescuing the Brawling Brutes leader from Sokoa's running hip attack, setting up a tag team title match this week on SmackDown as well. Now, this is really interesting because prior to last night's show, and this just goes to show that be careful what you read on social media. I saw it. I bet you saw it before the show last night um, when it comes to Raw. So many people, so many people were saying big return tonight on Raw. I heard a big return tonight on Raw. And it must be said, none of the big hitters, Sean Ross Sapp, Dave Meltzer, Mike Johnson, none of them actually tweet Andrew Zarian. None of them tweeted out Cody Rhodes is coming back tonight or there's going to be a big return tonight. They didn't because they weren't sure. They weren't sure. And even if they got that information, they said, I can't confirm it. So I'm not sure I want to go on the record with that. But there were people on Twitter that want to get attention, that want to be first, that put that out there. Big return last night. And of course, the return didn't happen. And the return they were referring to was Cody Rhodes. And when it didn't happen, they go, oh, bad information. And it just goes to show, don't believe everything you read on Twitter. Don't. And it also goes to show that WWE possibly have people putting out their misinformation, one, to find out where the leaks are, and two, to get you to watch a show that previously you probably weren't planning on watching by saying there's got to be a big return tonight and then it doesn't happen. Then they can also say, wow, we didn't advertise anything. That's on you. So I think that's quite interesting. Nevertheless, we did get a hint at a return, but not an actual return, of the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Now, this is really interesting because, of course, a lot of people are assuming that Cody Rhodes will be back for the Royal Rumble. A lot of people are assuming that Cody Rhodes will win the Royal Rumble. Of course, Rhodes went down with a torn pectoral injury in June of last year, last resting at Hell in a Cell. While he hasn't been talked about constantly, his name has come up a few times on WWE programming since, including an interview with Cody on Raw's best of 2022 show last week but last night a video package aired tracing Rhodes departure and return to the company including footage of his father's quest to become WWF champion decades earlier the video which is the first in a series had a clear purpose of stating why Rhodes came back to WWE and what he was hoping to accomplish before he went down with his torn pec injury this will all likely culminate in Rhodes entering the Royal Rumble at the end of the month, with the goal building to being to build anticipation and excitement for the American Nightmare's return, the rather just trying to get a surprise pop. I think it's just certainly uh, an explanation that 
he's going to be coming back very, very soon. So expect to see him probably at the Royal Rumble, maybe even before then. Now, WrestleMania season is on the horizon. One match that won't be taking place, which people thought would be, is Becky Lynch versus Ronda Rousey. There has been more information on WWE scrapping a majorly planned match for WrestleMania 39. Now, it's been rumored since last year's event that WWE was planning for the long-awaited singles encounter between Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey to take place at WrestleMania 39. However... It was reported last week that WWE is no longer planning the match for WrestleMania, with rumors instead pitting Rousey against Rhea Ripley on the show. This was prior to Rousey losing the SmackDown Women's Championship to Charlotte Flair on the December 30 episode of SmackDown. Well... Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select has provided an update on the reason behind WWE cancelling plans for the big match. The report confirms the match is no longer slated for WrestleMania, but was not able to confirm the report that Rousey was slated to face Rhea Ripley instead. One top talent told Fightful that they still expect uh, Ronda to feature in a big match at the show. As for the reports that those close to Becky thought the match between her and Ronda had, quote, lost its luster, Fightful notes that the talent they spoke to confirmed that most involved thought that the WrestleMania 35 match should have been a singles match. Of course, it wasn't. Charlotte Flair was shoehorned into it and now as time's gone on maybe the desire to see it isn't there or isn't as much as it was a few years ago as for Becky's reaction to this a source familiar with the situation said that Becky didn't even seem bothered by the idea that the match would no longer be taking place but no update on what her match at Wrestlemania would end up being instead could be uh, Rousey versus Lynch isn't the only match planned for the show um, that has changed due to the change in regime we'll talk about that in just a second but it's an interesting one because, again, when Rousey came back last year, the feeling was she came back to face Becky Lynch to do that match they've wanted to do for ages. And that was the biggest women's match they could possibly do. But a year later, it's strange because Ronda Rousey, who I think gets paid the most out of any female pro wrestler in WWE, I think, um, she doesn't, not that she doesn't feel a star, but she just doesn't feel important really now. And is, is Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch, is that any bigger than Becky Lynch versus... I don't know who she would face off against. That's my question. Who would it be? If Say it was Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus. Maybe they would go in that direction. I'm not sure. Speaking of WrestleMania, this is an interesting one. At one point, there was reportedly a pitch for Cody Rhodes, who we just spoke about, to face John Cena at the showcase of the Immortals in Hollywood. Now, it was recently reported by Wrestling News Co. that WWE had scrapped plans for Becky Lynch versus Ronda Rousey to take place in Los Angeles at the show, which had been the direction planned since the, before the change in regime. Now, this report came prior to Rousey dropping the SmackDown Women's Championship to Charlotte Flair, as I mentioned on SmackDown last week. Uh, now, Fightful Select Sean Ross Sapp has provided some additional details from inside the company regarding pitches that were made for the show uh, during um, Vince McMahon's time there. Sean Ross Sapp notes that anything that was planned by Vince McMahon to take place at the show prior to his departure from the company is now naturally no longer planned. One such presumption was that Cody Rhodes would end up competing for the WWE Championship on the show. Fightful noted that sources in WWE Creative noted to them that while it is still assumed to be the case, they have not been outright told as such. WWE is hoping to secure various big names for the show, such as Logan Paul and The Rock, but no confirmation was given as to the status of either man as of right now. The WrestleMania status of John Cena, who wrestled his first and only match of 2022 on last week's SmackDown, was also left unclear, with internal conversation regarding a WrestleMania opponent for him recently shifting from Austin Theory to possibly Logan Paul. The report also confirms that various other top names have pushed to work with Cena at the show, going far Far back as July last year. Interestingly, the report notes that at one time there had been pitches made within WWE for Cody Rhodes versus John Cena to take place at WrestleMania, but that is not something that Fightful had heard discussed since the change in regime. So it had been pitched, but it's looking more and more likely that that's not going to be the case with the general assumption is that Cody Rhodes will probably be in the WWE Championship picture at WrestleMania and not facing John Cena. 
WWE is getting a new headquarters. It's been the plan for a long time. Titan Towers, of course, that's been the home to WWE corporate headquarters since 1991. But like Vince McMahon, the company is opting to leave the famous building in the past. CT Insider published an article detailing WWE's new headquarters in Stamford, Connecticut, set to open towards the end of the first quarter of 2023. WWE is planning to move all of its 800 plus employees to the building by the end of the year. WWE still owns the building known as Titan Towers hours as well as a production studio that is just blocks away from the former headquarters despite being in the process of vacating employees from both buildings. With the move WWE's corporate and production headquarters will now be under the same roof. While the former buildings are not for sale a company spokesperson said they would entertain discussions with interested parties. The new headquarters will be located in a building that was once inhabited by banking giant UBS and will share the building with accounting firm KPMG as well as tobacco company Philip Morris, an architecture firm with WWE occupying around 400,000 square feet. WWE initially announced plans to move to its headquarters in March of 2019, finalizing plans in 2021. Initially, WWE had intended to be moved into the new headquarters by the end of 2022. Titan Towers had been a regular stage for memorable WWE moments and even played host to the 2020 men's and women's Money in the Bank matches during WWE's infamous tenure in the Thunderdome and at the Performance Center during COVID-19 restrictions. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. But as I mentioned, there have been plenty of famous moments and memories shot in Titan Towers. It'll be interesting to see what else they do in the new headquarters once they move in there. There is a possibility that Seth Rollins might have been injured last night on Raw. We don't really have a lot of confirmation on this. So thanks to TN Loudmouth in attendance at last night's taping of Raw, there could have been some concern for Seth Rollins after the show went off the air. Sharing footage from the arena, it can be seen that Rollins struggles to exit from the ringside area and at one point goes to the ground before rising again. With Corey Graves and referees involved, Rollins manages to get along, but with seemingly maximum effort. Obviously, Rollins put on an epic US Championship attempt on last night's edition of Raw, facing off against champion Austin Theory in a hard-fought battle. With multiple near falls and even an um, incapacitated referee spot, it seemed possible that Rollins would be poised to win the title, although it eventually proved not to be his night, as Theory successfully retained. Of course, if we get any confirmation on this, we'll let you know. At this moment in time, it might have just been Fingers crossed for Rollins he's not injured and certainly fingers crossed for WWE he's not injured because they just lost AJ Styles to a broken ankle, of course, who was also on the Raw brand. Colby Carino has been heavily linked to WWE and is now officially a free agent. Um, he uh, tweeted out um, on January f- uh, 2nd saying, quote, free agent. As I mentioned, he had recently been part of a WWE tryout. His contract with the NWA has expired and the expectation is that he is going to be on his way to WWE. If we get any confirmation on an official signing or announcement, we'll discuss it here on the channel. Finally, Charlotte Flair once again is the SmackDown Women's Champion. And certainly, there's an impressive milestone she also achieved during the feat. By the time Charlotte Flair's career is over, she'll likely go down as the single most dominant woman in professional wrestling history. The 14-time world champion returned to WWE TV on Friday night when she shocked Ronda Rousey and won the SmackDown Women's Championship, adding another piece of hardware to her already historic trophy case. Flair's championship victory on Friday night also cemented her decade-long dominance over the WWE Women's Division, making it her 10th straight calendar year winning a Women's Championship. The historic stretch was first pointed out by the Wrestling Stats and Info account, which noted Flair has won a title every year since debuting in WWE and winning the NXT Women's Championship back in 2014. Flair has gone on to win and hold every championship possible in WWE's Women's Division, including the Raw and SmackDown Women's Championships, the Women's Tag Team Championships too. Flair's record-breaking run goes so far back, so far back she even won the now-retired WWE Divas Championship, holding the title when it was retired and took turned into the WWE Women's Championship. Of course, that later became the Raw Women's Championship. Flair became the fourth Women's Grand Slam champion in WWE history in 2020 when she and Asuka captured the tag team title. So... That's a good show. Strong booking of Charlotte Flair. But there you go, guys. That's the latest WWE news for you today. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. Let me know your thoughts on today's WWE news stories in the comment section below. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.